Hi, it's been a while. Since the last time I made the tutorial, I learned a couple of tricks from my colleagues at the Longplay channel and I would like to share them with you. Uh, these tricks are mostly centered around troubleshooting common issues when uh, recording from an emulator or a real console and optimizing the video quality for best image on YouTube. In this particular video, I will only cover the uh, recording part and uh, when it comes to editing, I will talk about it in the next one. Now, um, when it comes to recording, I will start with the hardware recordings, which I do using OBS and uh, the Elgato HD60S Plus and the RetroTINK uh, 5X Pro. You can see here that it's a HD60S Plus. Now, I found this combination to be great for uh, recording uh, video game consoles that don't have HDMI. For everything that has HDMI, you don't really need to get very creative. You just plug them into your uh, video capture device that is HDMI enabled, and you record it at the resolution that the console outputs. There is nothing more intricate to it. When it comes to older systems, they need to be upscaled. And uh, RetroTINK 5X is probably one of the best things that you could uh, that you could get for upscaling old systems. It comes with a variety of features that make it uh, really, really, really easy to get good quality footage from PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, or even Saturn, which are uh, known to be really annoying when it comes to resolution switching and uh, inconsistent resolution uh, from the consoles themselves. Uh, when it comes to the uh, inconsistency with resolution switching, this is what triple buffering is for. This is this option right here. Uh, this essentially prevents the image from being dropped whenever the console switches resolution. It doesn't take any time whenever a resolution switch happens, it just never drops the image. It's brilliant. Um, the second option, which I have here, lock to 60 hertz. It's only really relevant if you have a European console playing American games, like for example what I have with my PAL PlayStation 2 uh, playing American games. Uh, essentially what it does is it sets the uh, it sets the uh, refresh rate to 60 hertz, even if the input's the refresh rate is 50. This also further to uh, prevent uh, the image drops whenever a switch to a different uh, refresh rate occurs. The, uh, the color space, you want to keep it at full. There is no reason to use limited nowadays unless literally your monitor cannot accept it, in which case it's probably like age ancient. When it comes to inputs that this thing accepts, uh, the most important ones are right away up top, the YPRBR and um, SCART RGB. You can also use Composite and uh, I'm not exactly sure what this one is, haven't really, uh, haven't really looked into it. But uh, yeah, if you have this device, you don't really wanna use Composite or Composite over SCART. It's kind of like it's it's a waste of potential. When it comes to scaling, uh, oh well, this one we don't really need to touch ever unless you specifically want to do something. But I'm not gonna get into that because this video is never gonna end. Um, the interlacing, very important. You want to use motion adaptive. The other modes, they are not terrible but also uh, if you have motion adaptive you really don't want to use anything else weave seems to be okay at first glance it seems even sharper but then when you move it looks like garbage so yeah motion adaptive all the way no reason to ever no reason to ever choose anything else now when it comes to uh, vertical filtering there is several options i found that medium looks most natural and uh, the other ones go a little bit too far in all, all directions, but I choose sharp for recording purposes because I want to have the sharpest image for when I'm editing. 
if I find an image too sharp, I can always make it more, uh, I can always make it less so, but it's hard to make a not sharp image look sharp again. Horizontal sampling. Again, it's an option, uh, there is a lot of options here between the two generic ones. Um, I generally just stick with generic 4x3. There is some specific ones for the uh, for various specific systems, which are not going to look like anything here because this is a PS2 game. Uh, but um, you can. This is essentially a dedicated pixel perfect mode for uh, a given system. It looks great when it works, but oftentimes this phase detection uh, can fail you, and it will give you a an even worse looking image than if you were just uh, using a generic mode. In general, yeah, anything that's... Uh, you, you either get perfect or horrible. And there is nothing in between when you're using the specific, uh, specific uh, timings here. Um, and es essentially, when it comes to the PlayStation 1 games and Saturn games, uh, each game pretty much uses multiple resolutions. And if you dedicate yourself to one of them, all the other ones are going to look like garbage. So I just stick with generic. It has not failed me yet. Now, uh, when it comes to the SD, no, not that's not relevant. When it comes to the video ADC, I recommend to keep the setting at medium. Uh, it does look better. It does tend to look better if you set it to off. Sometimes it gives you a very slightly sharper image, but I also found that it, uh, it enables a lot of noise to come through. And uh, yeah, it's just not great. You may also want to uh, enable the uh, video ADC settings to work for EDTV inputs. Essentially what that means is if your game runs in 480p, this will still apply. And this is very helpful for uh, Xbox original, the original Xbox, and uh, the PlayStation 2, as well as the Wii, because those consoles have rather noisy uh, component output. Now, when it comes to output resolution, this is the very important part for recording. Uh, the default setting for uh, RetroThink 5X is this. Uh, this essentially simulates the typical aspect ratio that you will get if you plug your console into a TV and set it to 4x3 mode. However, I found that this mode tends to give you an uh, image that is stretched, uh, ver uh, stretched vertically. You can see that the, uh, that the circle in the top left corner is a little bit more egg-shaped than, uh, than it is circular. And uh, also, uh, this, uh, this mode, while it does do a fantastic job at uh, upscaling the, uh, the image, does add uh, some degree of, uh, well, Upscaling. It does use. Uh, it does seem to use nearest neighbor, which is a very good, uh, very good alternative to uh, integer. But if we use 1080p under, we just get integer scaling, which essentially that means it upscales it uh, two times, or however many times is possible within the 1080p window, or under that 1080p window. So in this case, we get um, 480i upscaled to uh, 960p, and the rest is filled out with the underscan to, uh, to just like fill out the entire window to 1080p. So your computer, uh, your computer screen or your uh, TV doesn't complain that it doesn't get uh, a normal resolution. You can also pick the 1080p over. Now this setting does uh, goes like one step further, and it upscales the uh, upscales the resolution one one more time seemingly, 
Uh, however, I found that this uh, mode tends to also cut off stuff from the top and bottom of the screen, which also isn't ideal. It does use, it does seem to use integer scaling, and it does seem to also keep, uh, no, actually, it doesn't use integer scaling, that's another thing. You can see that it is more, uh, it is more, uh, the uh, five, the, 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 uh, the logo in the top left corner is a little bit more egg-shaped than it is in the 1080p under mode. So I guess that's like one thing to jot down for meh. You also have the 1080p minimal lag mode, but I never really found any need for it since this device already has very, very little lag when it comes to processing the image. You can also have 1200p. However, in this mode, while I can use it now, thanks to my new monitor, uh, it uh, doesn't have as many options for uh, for upscaling, or I don't know. It doesn't have as many sampling options as uh, the other modes do. Not that it is relevant for everything, but it is something to take into account. Now that we've gotten the first step of the hardware recording out of the way, let's talk about the OBS itself. Now. Uh, First things first, uh, when it comes to the um, quality settings, I generally set the output mode to simple because I found the advanced settings to be a little bit unnecessarily complicated. And uh, I use, <coughs> sorry, indistinguishable quality at larger file size. I have used medium quality before, or rather what they say, high quality medium file size, uh, but I found that the quality of the of the video itself was rather lacking, especially when a screen changed very quickly from one to another one, you could see a lot of compression artifacting. The video encounter, uh, yeah, you can use a software one if you don't have a... Um, if you don't have a GPU that supports uh, hardware encoding. Mine does, so I use it. It is more efficient on uh, processing. And another thing, well, when it comes to the uh, resolution, you generally want to have the base resolution and the output scaled resolution to match together. I've heard many people complain that they can't set the resolution right, but the thing is, you can just mark this. Uh, you can just mark this portion and write whatever it is you want. Whenever you do uh, change the base canvas resolution, the output resolution will change automatically with it which uh, you can also just change with this. The first option will always be the base resolution that you selected above. So if I were to select something different like 1440p, this, would, uh, this option would be 1440p. And when it comes to the FPS values, I just settled at 60. 15, uh, 59.94 may be the correct, res uh, the correct refresh rate for most PS2 games, but 60 is the correct res uh, refresh rate for most PC monitors, so I don't know which one is correct anymore. But also, I never noticed the difference, so here we are. Uh, and uh, the most important thing when it comes to color range very important to set it to full. By default, OBS has this option set to limited. If you have it set to limited, this may actually uh, have bad effect on your footage in the end. You will get, uh, for example, if you use uh, Vegas to edit, Vegas is set to automatically full color range. If you put limited color range video into Vegas, it will appear very bleak, like color has been sucked out of it. It's just like a uh, black will be gray, and uh, it just looks uh, 
It just looks like saturation has been lowered in it. You can compensate for it afterwards, but why bother when you can just record everything in full color range and never have to never have to remember to do anything with this. Not at all, these settings are done. Uh, one more thing that I haven't mentioned yet. You may notice that I have Olgato Sound set as a separate thing. Technically, you don't need to do it uh, because uh, Elgato has, uh, if, if you add Elgato as the video capture, it will automatically add its sound. However, over the years, I found that this is not very reliable. Even when Elgato was showing me that it had uh, things going on in it, uh, it would often, uh, there would often be audio missing in the recording I made without any indication as to why, and uh, I got annoyed with it, and I found a solution which was to add audio input capture. From here, you just select digital audio interface video game capture, and it will appear, uh, it will appear as yet another source. Now, I will delete this one because I don't need it, I already have it added, but I will show... Uh, I'll lower the volume of my, uh, of my speakers for a moment. Um, here, uh, it is very important to, first of all, mute all of the other audio outputs. The original Elgato, we're gonna ignore it. The desktop audio, you don't need it. And here, we want to go to Advanced Properties. And uh, you will want, uh, in case you are recording using OBS Preview, which is what I do, uh, I don't set up a second, uh, my second monitor as the uh, preview monitor anymore. I find the OBS uh, Preview to be good enough. I set it to Monitor and Output. Essentially, this means that uh, whatever uh, is being outputted by the Elgato sound, I will also hear through my speakers, like, like so. But, uh, yeah, of course, right now, because I'm uh, recording the video, I don't want the sound to, be, uh, to keep going on around. All right, so this is it when it comes to the OBS. So now let's talk about BizHawk. BizHawk is essentially an emulator that covers a whole bunch of different consoles. Uh, there's some, some examples here. And there is uh, quite a few more, actually. Uh, they just don't, uh, don't quite appear. They don't have multiple cores available. Before you actually get started with uh, BizHawk, there is a few things that you will want to uh, take a look at. First things first, you want to take a look at the hotkeys. Uh, my advice is to uh, delete literally everything that you're never going to use. If you happen to press something accidentally, you'll never know what you actually did. So just press an option, press escape, as it, say, uh, as it says here, and uh, move on to the next. Uh, you can always go back here and, uh, select, uh, and make a hotkey for a given button later, when you feel like you need it. But uh, in general, like there's so many functions that you will probably not touch and then you're gonna be like, why is my thing not doing the thing? Uh, one thing I definitely recommend is, uh, well, that's at least how I set my uh, save states. I set them on number of buttons on my keyboard and I saved the, I set the load states. Uh, to the uh, QWERTY o EOP uh, buttons that are directly underneath it. And here is uh, the movie buttons. We are going to be using these functions, but I prefer to not have them under hotkeys because I tend to uh, drop my controller very closely to the keyboard and then things happen. Uh, the rest of the options I have uh, never messed with, so I can't say uh, one way or another. I already have it set uh, correctly, so that's not going to be a problem. Let's just pick up a game as an, uh, as an example. I'm just going to pick uh, 
Herc's Adventure, because why the hell not? Now that we have the game selected, uh, I would like to uh, talk about the options underneath here. Uh, this is AVI do, uh, slash wave, which essentially stands for the video recording function. You may be wondering why would you want to use a video recording function if I already just explained how OBS works. Well, there is a lot of advantages to using this function, uh, particularly uh, that uh, this recording functional, uh, functionality is completely unaffected by uh, speed up, slowdowns, and hiccups in the emulation. I will, um, I will demonstrate it very quickly uh, by recording a very short uh, video in very low resolution, uh, just, to, just to make it quickly. Uh, let's see, emulator dumps, just for show. All right, so first things first, uh, you may notice uh, the emulation has not, is paused. I will unpause it now and I will uh, slow it down and I'm going to speed up the emulation. I'm going to slow it down. Well, actually, no, that was a bad idea. <laughs> so uh, that's one thing that the, the, the frame, uh, frame dropping will capture if you rewind uh, the recording, as, as you'll see here, the, the Lucas Arts logo will just never get to, to where it needs to go. But uh, if I speed it up, you can see like the I'm speeding up the cutscene. Nothing happened, uh, and uh, yeah, this is enough. Uh, I'm going to now stop the AVI, and we're going to play it back real quick, just for show. Uh, just for show. Oh, <laughs> okay. I had it set to DS resolution, but uh, so the resolution is utterly incorrect. But uh, you'll see uh, in a moment that it's going to go back and forth on the LucasArts logo. Well, I mean, it's kind of going back and forth here. So that's like one thing that you don't want to do when you're recording with the frame dropper is to is to rewind but everything else as you can see it plays back in regular speed despite the fact that i was uh skipping ahead uh, on the video uh, on uh, uh, on the emulator basically had it set to turbo mode so yeah this is uh, this is one advantage that you uh, that the, uh, that there is to um the uh, frame dropping as opposed to OBS. It doesn't get affected by uh, speed up or slow down, but it does get affected by rewind. And um, here are some options. This is why uh, it looked so weird. Um, I have it set here to uh, the standard display resolution in this uh, emulation mode is uh, 800 on 480. Basically, it multiplies the image of the PlayStation 2 times 2 and it fits it in that size of 800 on 480. Um, you can, I recommend using the lag riff. You can use full frames if you really hate your hard drive space, but uh, this one's perfectly fine. I also should mention that uh, for, uh, for, most con uh, for most consoles, uh, these values are going to be exactly the same as the resolution, so you may want to consider uh, upgrading them to, let's say, twice or thrice the uh, the resolution, because it will, uh, even with all the upscaling tricks that you can do, it will just be very difficult to get good quality image if the uh, base resolution is very, very low. But now, uh, I want to show, uh, there is also another ver another option that you can see here, which is called movie. You may be thinking, why is there a movie and a video recording? What does movie actually mean? Well, uh, this is what they call a TAS, Tool Assisted Speedrun Tool. I like to pow uh, call it the power of God. Essentially what it does is it allows you uh, to 
uh, record the inputs that you make when playing the game. So for example here we're just going to record a movie. I'm going to be skipping it ahead. I'm going just to show off. I'm going to also be rewinding the Lucas Arts logo because I like doing that. And uh, I'm going to skip past this uh, opening sequence. I'm going to uh, show off a little bit how this is the best way to record your video, uh, record your footage from the emulator. Now, um, I'm going to make a save state on save state number one, as you can see here. Now, uh, in this reality, I go to the options and I change attack to the X button like a twit. And now I press uh, to exit and I start a new game. And I, pre and I select uh, the girl Chan. But hey, uh, that's actually very bad. So what I'm going to do now, I reloaded the state, I'm going to the options and I'm going to uh, turn on friendly fire because that is a very good idea in this game. And I'm going to pick uh, Jason because because why not? And speed up the process a little bit. As you can see, we're playing as Jason. Now um, I'm going to save this movie and we're going to play from the beginning. I'm going to speed it up, as you can, see, as you will see, this will play back everything exactly how I did, except minus all of the rewinds and uh, minus all of the uh, mistakes, like reloading the safe state. So as uh, I'm not touching anything. It's going to skip the cutscene somewhere around here. Um, I said it will. Yeah, there we go. And in a moment, I'm going to go into the options and uh, select the uh, friendly fire because I hate myself. And then I'm going to play as Jason, just like uh, I did in the second, the correct way of uh, the, the correct way that I recorded my movie. As you can see. The reality where I picked Atlanta didn't happen. The reality where I put X as the attack button, that never happened. And this is the beauty of recording things with, uh, uh, with the power of God. See? It's exactly how I did it. And uh, there is virtually no limit to how long these uh, videos can be. Uh, in my experience, I have uh, I have already played through games that had that spanned several discs and were about thirty hours long, through this, and everything went flawless, uh, flawlessly. Uh, now, um, what you want to keep in mind is because, well, like I said, I played several games that were very very long. You're not gonna play them in one go, and there are so uh, several things that you will want to pay attention to when uh, starting up the uh, re uh, the recording again. Now first things first, once uh, I have it uh, I have my movie set to at the end of the movie pause. This is a very safe uh, this is a very safe option because this gives me an option to for example make a save on the, uh, make a save state on this place and uh, also to uh, select the uh, unselect the read only mode. There is uh, normally there is a um, hotkey for this, but I disabled it because I kept hitting it by accident. So I have, uh, as you saw there, I enabled the read write mode. But as you can see, the icon still hasn't changed from. Uh, yeah, see, the movie is still on playback mode. What you need to do in order for it to really be recording the inputs is to reload the save state, the last save state that was still within the movie or somewhere near the end of it. And I'm going to move my character downwards, move back and forth like an idiot. And I'm going to make another state. 
and uh, I'm going to only do the read mode now, which is basically the same as playing back, but I'm just going to uh, load to save state number one and where it was at the menu where I selected the friendly fire and um, started as JSON. Let's speed it up. And you will see in a moment that it will pick up and I did some things. So this is how you can actually continue after you shut off the emulator. Um, I should also show that, uh, because well, this was in the same session. If I um, were to, for example, reopen the emulator, what I would have to do is select the game that I was playing, which is in this case, Herx Adventure. And then I would select the movie, recent, and Herx Adventure. And I take it back to the safe state where I ended last time, just to show off, see, it all works. Now I'm going to select safe state number three, which is right at the end. Movie, disable read only, reload state free, unpause, collect the coin, pause. Read only mode and reload state free. And it picked up from where I stopped. This is really, really, really handy. Uh, it saves you so much time on editing, and uh, especially when it comes to these God knows impossible games from the, the 80s and 90s that nobody was ever meant to beat. You know. It's just just like in the good old days. Uh, so this is basically it for uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the emulator. Of course, there's some options. This option, these options, for example, here, they will always be different depending on uh, the console that you're using. They all depend on the emulator that this was based off of. Um, PlayStation is one of the most annoying ones to deal with. Uh, the uh, when it comes to getting a good slash accurate image, uh, the Pixel Perfect Pro, the, the Pixel Pro mode is for uh, is a, is a good one for keeping the quality as high as possible, but it is terrible when it comes to getting the uh, aspect ratio correctly. Sometimes they're right because they use an aspect ratio of something like 320 on 240 and everything is dingle dangle. However, then there is also games like, for example, uh, Valkyria Profile, where the menus are gonna be in 512 on 240, whereas the gameplay is on uh, 352 on uh, 224 and you just can't deal. Uh, for those kinds of games, you may want to use uh, one of these two uh, modes. Essentially, uh, they force a, a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Um, and uh, this way, you will always get uh, you will always get the correct aspect ratio, even if the resolution decides to be magical. But you do have to remember to select a specific resolution for frame dropping. If you leave it at native resolution, you will get a completely different file at a completely different resolution every single time the resolution switches, which is even worse than dealing with Pixel Perfect Pro. PlayStation 1 is particularly difficult when it comes to that. Most other systems are nowhere near as annoying uh, when, it, when it comes to this, because PlayStation very much relied on uh, being able to stretch uh, resolutions uh, horizontally in order to make up for some shortcomings. Your display settings don't really make any difference when it comes to frame dropping. I should mention that the recording that we did before, you can absolutely do in this mode as well. So let's say I'm done with I'm done with recording this game. Let's just uh, sh uh, I'm just going to go into play from the beginning, which always automatically sets the movie into playback mode. And I'm going to configure my uh, I'm going to configure my recordings, and it decided to be in full frames for some reason. And then we're going to select that uh, folder just for show. 
and I'm going to play it back. But I don't want it to take forever. So what you can also do, just as I as I, just as I shown before, uh, frame dropping does not get affected by uh, speed changes so long as it goes forward. So you can just set it to unthrottled and it's going to go as quickly as your computer will allow for it. And none of it will ever get garbled or uh, glitched or anything. It will just go, it will just do everything that you did, including turning on friendly fire, which was a terrible idea. Don't recommend it. You shouldn't do it unless you really hate yourself. See, this is everything I did, including collecting coin, long play over. This is, it's perfect. And at the end, you just want to stop the AVI. And uh, once you're done with that, we can move on to the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.